So in the ancient past, we have some indications of water was flowing on the surface, but how much water was there? Are we talking about oceans? Are we talking about small rivers? Did it rain? So these definitions of how much water was on the planet was very undefined. A major question has been how much water did Mars actually have when it was young and how did it lose that water? The findings indicate that only 13% of an ancient ocean remains on the planet today, now stored in the polar ice caps. 87% of this ocean has been lost to space. This means that early Mars would have looked much different than it does today, with a significant portion of its surface covered by water. So the really interesting question is, could it form a sea or an ocean? And indeed, it would. In the Northern Plains, which is a relatively flat region but depressed from the rest of the planet, it would form an ocean that was approximately 20% of the planet's surface area. And so that is a respectable ocean. This ocean had a maximum depth of around 5,000 feet or around one mile deep. It's deep, not as deep as the deepest points of our oceans, but comparable to the average depth of the Mediterranean Sea. By combining Martian topography with the new estimate for water loss, the researchers were able to simulate Mars's ancient ocean and its escape to space. As Mars lost its atmosphere over billions of years, it lost the pressure and heat needed to keep water liquid, causing the ocean to shrink and recede northward. The remaining water eventually condensed and froze over the north and south poles, giving Mars the ice caps that we see today. We now know that uh, Mars was wet for a much longer time than, than we thought before. Curiosity shows it was wet for one and a half billion years, already much longer than the period of time needed for life to develop on Earth. And now we see that Mars must have been wet for a period even longer. It's fascinating that we can learn so much about 4.5 billion years ago what measurements are taking right now. And ultimately we can conclude this idea of an ocean covering 20% of the planet, which opens the idea of habitability and the evolution of life on the planet. Building on this knowledge, scientists are developing the next series of robotic probes to be sent to Mars in the coming years. This time, NASA is building on its successes, utilizing hardware and systems that they know will work. We've been to Mars before with the JPL Lockheed Martin team. We've been to the surface of Mars before successfully with Phoenix. We know how to operate the arm. The surface operations are much, much simpler than Phoenix. We're putting two instruments on the surface, and then we're leaving them there with no ground-in-the-loop interaction repetitive, weekly, uplink, downlink sessions. We're just made to do this mission. The InSight mission is a, a geophysical mission to Mars. It's gonna to go to Mars and take its vital signs. It's gonna take its, its heartbeat, the, the, the seismic activity of the, of the planet. So we're gonna be doing that using a seismometer, a very high precision seismometer, using techniques that have been well developed on Earth to get the understanding of the crust, mantle, and core, and sort of the relationship between those. It's going to take its temperature by measuring the thermal gradient of the surface, which tells how much heat is coming out. And we also have a heat flow probe, we call it HP cubed. And what that does is it's going to basically take the temperature of Mars, and from that it'll be able to understand what the thermal flux is over the course of a full Martian year. And it's going to sort of uh, measure its reflexes by looking at how the rotation uh, wobbles with the uh, the uh, uh, tile effects of the sun. Our final experiment is called RISE, and that's going to be looking at the, uh, basically the wobble of Mars to help understand uh, what the core size may be in composition. The European Space Agency is also well along with ExoMars, a rover with advanced drilling capability due to be launched by 2018. Its principal goal, to drill down deep in search of microorganisms. What uh, is new with ExoMars, with the rover in particular, is what we call the mobility. Mobility not only horizontal, but also vertical. And this is a peculiar thing that we have on board ExoMars mission. So we, be, we will be able to sample material from below the surface that is quite important to understand if there is any sign of uh, past life activity on Mars. We will be looking for the first time in the third dimension, the third dimension being depth. And we think that is where we have the highest chance of making an interesting discovery 
regarding the presence of organic molecules in, in Mars. It's a whole planet out there with a complicated history. It's that history is a story that's stored in the rocks, and our job is to figure out that story and what that story of that planet tells us about this planet that we live on. So where Curiosity takes rocks and grinds them up into powder and looks at their bulk constituents, what this mission would need to do is uh, be able to look in a microscopic level and examine the rocks for these very tiny and detailed messages that they would be sending to us about the past life that could have lived there. This that I'm holding up here is a classic biosignature from the Earth. It's a fossil. We're not actually expecting to see a fossil of, of shells or other components, but what we want to be able to see are, with this instrumentation, are the fine scale layering that one might see in a rock, in which we can see dark and light-toned layers, and those dark and light-toned layers are telling a story.